Hey everyone, Kay in the Shell here. Today we'll talk about three data modification techniques that are sometimes confused. Those are encoding, encrypting, and hashing. What they have in common is that they start from data, either text or binary, and apply a transformation that changes this data to someone that looks hidden or garbled. But those three techniques have actually very different properties, and we'll discuss about those now. So let's start with encoding. Encoding is actually a rather generic term, but today we'll say that encoding is transforming data using a public and reversible algorithm that does not use any secret. The public part means that the algorithm is documented. ASCII, for example, is an encoding. It uses agreed upon mapping between numbers and characters. A JPEG file format is another. It publicly describes how image data is stored. You can find this structure on Wikipedia. The reversible part means that it's trivial to move from the encoded version back to the original data. It's basically about applying the mapping in the reverse order. And the part about there being no secret is the fact that anybody in possession of the encoded data and the encoding logic can reverse it. There is no other knowledge to have. So when do we use encoding? We use encoding when we need to store the data in a format that does not allow the direct representation of the raw source. Computer hardware only has zeros and ones, right? Well, we'll encode our arithmetic in binary. So in Python, for example, we have functions to go one way or the other. Okay, another example. Computers understand binary and not characters. Well, we'll map characters to numbers. In Twin Python, we have functions that go one way and the other. We have some binary data, say an image, and we want to pass it through a communication channel that allows only text, say JSON. We use base64. I'll do a full episode on that one. But as a small example, Let's do base64 of a, an image file and we get some text data. So we can store that in uh, data, base64 of my image file. And now we can reverse data and pass it to base64 dash e. Type xxd, type plus, and we see again there is the jfif at the top here, so we have uh, our JPEG back basically. So it is interesting to note that encoded values can be either text or binary, depending on the purpose of the encoding. So encrypting now. Encrypting is transforming data using a public and reversible algorithm, but with secret this time. This means that to go from the raw data to the encrypted data you need, or well, the data, you need the methodology, but you also need a secret that will typically change every single time. Reversing here is still trivial, the method is public, but reversing the transformation requires the knowledge of the secret. Encrypting is therefore used when you want to hide data. If somebody intercepts an encrypted payload, the expectation is that this person will not be able to go back to the original raw data. Encrypted output is generally binary data, as there is no reason to restrain ourselves to character values. Okay, let's do a small example in Python. We we'll use the decimetric cipher. So I can choose a, a key, like that, and I can initialize my cipher like that with the key. And then I can uh, initialize a, 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 a plain text like that. And then I can encrypt, I can encrypt this plain text. Okay, this is some garbled binary data. Now I can de decrypt this plain text also, and I can look at it and I'm back with my original text. Now, if I try to use a second cipher with a key 
that I'm guessing because I don't know the actual right key. And I try to decrypt, decipher, uh, second cipher dot decrypt by encoding the encoded text. Well, obviously, what I'm getting is some some more garble I have not been able to decrypt. So that leaves this third one, which is a bit weird, which is hashing. Hashing transforms data using a public algorithm that is non-reversible this time. That means that presented with some hashed data, there is no way to go back to the original data. Hashes generally have a fixed size. For example, the SHA-256 hashing algorithm will output an alphanumeric value of 64 characters, whatever the size of the input. So for example, if I input a small string and I hash it, I get 64 characters. If I input a large string, and I hash it, I get 64 characters. If I input a large JPEG file and I hash it, I get 64 characters always. Because of that, several inputs can have the same hash output for a given algorithm. There are actually an infinity of inputs that will give the same hash. Let's take an example with MD5. I found this example on the web. I have two images. I think we can agree that they are different. Yet, they have the same MD5 sum. We can do that with MD5 tool, and we do MD5 file 1 and file 2, and we get the same sum. But we can see, obviously, that those files are very different. So that has negative implication when used in security mechanisms. That's why hashing algorithms have an additional property which is that they are divergent. A simple way to understand that is that it's impossible, rather very hard, to produce a given hash. There might be an infinity of valid inputs that produce the given hash, but you have no technique to craft such input, except for luck and trying, which is an impossibly long endeavor. With those strange properties, what are hashes used for? Hashes are typically used for generating signatures. From a piece of data, you generate a small signature. You can use a signature to verify data integrity. When you download a file on the internet, for example, it might get corrupted and it might have been tampered with. A signature can tell you if the data you got is intact. You can also use a signature to store passwords. In modern systems, you don't store your user's password in the database in clear. If you did and your database got compromised, so would your credentials. So rather, you store the password signature. It's safer because even if the database is stolen, you can't log in with the signature. And since it's basically impossible to generate an input that has this signature, you can't reverse it to find the user's password. So yes, I know there are dictionary attacks, but it's more complicated and I won't get into that today. Okay, so to conclude, a little note. We talked today about public algorithms. It makes sense when you want to exchange data with random users on the web, for example, we need to speak the same language. But what about private algorithms? If we don't disclose the algorithm, surely the communication is safer, right? Well, actually, that is rarely the case. There are myriads of techniques to reverse things. In security, there is actually a saying, security through obscurity is no security at all. I'll leave you on that note. Bye-bye.